Hey, all right, it's not too late. You can still plant and harvest before that first frost. Let's take a look at what you can get in the ground now. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renewed Homestead. Ben and Denise here, and there's Loki. And we want to talk about your summer garden and what can we get in the ground now, because there is still time before your first frost. And so what, what have you got lined up? What are we putting in the ground like really soon? Well, what, what I wanna talk about, I know there's a lot of people that um, are concerned. Um, we've had emails, we've talked to other homesteaders and other YouTube channels. And there's a lot of people that are really worried about the food situation right now. And a lot of people are really discouraged thinking it's too late, there is no way I have time. But there are still a few plants that you can put in the ground and that you can still harvest. Well, unless you're in Alaska. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's- We're not. We're not. <laughs> We're zone 6A? 6B. 6B. Yeah, so we're zone 6B. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is your first frost date, right? Right. Do you want to explain what a first frost date is? <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it seems counterintuitive, but your first frost is the first frost of the year coming out of summer. So you know, the, the first frost right before this coming Christmas, uh, that's your first frost. Last frost is the first one that happens in the year at the end of winter before you go into spring. So... It can be confusing, but just think your first frost is the one that's, you know. First before winter. First before winter. Yes. There you go. So, and I know it's, I, it, it, when I first heard it, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> but So first frost before winter, but you want to pay attention to your frost dates and you can easily look it up online, put in your uh, city and state, you know. Uh, well, we found that link, right? Well, there's, yeah, they have county extension offices where oh, they can find it, true. but say you're in Detroit, Michigan, you can say Detroit, Michigan, uh, first frost date, and it will come up and let you know your first frost date. So our first frost date is October 13th, Wait. which surprised me because Michigan, I watched a, um, a video Gar by M.I. Gardner a little while ago, and his first frost date's October 20th. Is it 20th? 24th, I, I don't know. It's just, it's a matter of days after ours, and he's all yeah. the way up in Michigan. So. <laughs> I know, but our first frost date is October 13th. So if we wanted to get some things started, um, we could grow some fast growing crops. So I want to mention uh, four crops that y'all can grow um, that will harvest, that you'll be able to harvest quickly. Now, obviously you're going to want to pay attention to your first frost date because once that frost date hits, if you do get a frost, it's going to kill your summer garden. Now you can plant some fall plants right now, but we're talking about things you can do that are summer, typically in a summer garden. Right, and we are at T minus 93 days as of yes, today. Yes, T minus 93 days. For so. the average first frost date. Doesn't yes. Mean, doesn't mean it can't come early. Doesn't mean it's not gonna be December 31st. Yeah, and we normally get a last frost here on Mother's Day weekend. We did not get that frost this year, so things and, just happen weirdly. And that's why all the bugs. <laughs> yes, and we've been inundated with bugs this year. Ooh. Okay, so um, if we, since our, uh, since our first frost is October 13th, if we were to plant a fast growing squash, um, which we're gonna talk about here in a moment, we'd have about 20 days, depending on the squash, to actually harvest that squash. So that's plenty of time to get a really good squash harvest in. Um, and there are plenty of squashes that you're gonna be able to grow that are that you'll be able to can, well, you can can jar right in soups and freeze oh, yeah. them and all kinds of stuff. Yep, cut them up, freeze them. Yeah. Cook them in a stew. Cook them in a stew, which we did last year. <laughs> yes. Still have one one or two left. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to go through um, and kind of give you some of the varieties, and then we're going to let you know if it is a... Um, uh, if it's a hybrid or if it is an open heirloom or open pollinated, sorry, or heirloom. Now, if you want to know the differences between open pollinated, heirloom, and hybrid, um, I will go ahead and post a video that we did um, at the end of this video where you can learn all about the different type of seeds. So early acorn squash, that will be ready in 75 to 85 days. 
Now there's a hybrid variety called Goldilocks that's available in 70 days. Butterbush squash is 75 to 85 days. That's so those are three different types of squash that y'all could plant right now, get it in the ground, and it would be ready before a lot of people's first frost date. Oh, and, and the nice thing about squash is they'll sit on your counter and they, they'll last a while. They will. Yeah. yeah, you can actually overstore them for winter. And these yeah. are typically winter, uh, winter squash. Um, do you want to explain kind of the difference between a winter and a summer squash? If I knew, I'd be glad to tell you. One comes up in the summer and one you can keep into the winter. Oh, well, yes. No, summer squashes don't last as long. So winter squashes, you can typically put up. You're the one who told me that a couple years ago. He did. So winter squashes will typically will store better and they will store longer. So that's why they call them winter squashes, because during the winter, you can go out to your root cellar, basement, whatever you have, and you can actually grab that squash. So it will last well into the winter so you can store it. That is the hazard of homesteading because you learn so much, it just oozes stuff out of your brain that you, <laughs> so you don't remember everything. I, what is it? I've forgotten more than I've, I've forgotten. Never mind. I don't remember. <laughs> All right. Now, believe it or not, you actually still have time for tomatoes. Yes, I know. It sounds crazy. Everybody's like, no, no, no. You have to get those in in May, beginning of June. No, you actually do have a few varieties um, that you can. Now, typically, they're going to be smaller tomatoes, um, and they um, many of them are going to be determinate. So do you want to kind of explain determinate versus indeterminate? Determinate, all the, the plant grows, they, they all grow at the same, basically the same speed. They put on all the fruit that they're going to and it all ripens at the same time. And it stops growing. And it stops growing. And that's you, once they start ripening, you've got to harvest them and that's it. Indeterminate, you know, you've seen these tomato plants that grow and grow and grow and people grow them into trees and they just keep producing they ju they just keep going until a frost kills them yep so. that's inde in indeterminate indeterminate yep. yep so that's a difference so um there is a deter there is a an indeterminate here that you will be able to grow if you want to um but they also have determinates here but stupichka um it's actually 50 to 60 days you, you do and you'll clean it up <laughs> we actually have seeds for the stupichka we just haven't planted them yet uh, Juliet is another indeterminate. Um, Juliet is a paste tomato. It's available in 60 days. So now there's a subarctic plenty. Now this is a determinate and you're going to notice here a subarctic plenty determinate 42 to 45 days. So notice that difference. Uh, the Juliet 60 days, the subarctic is 42 to 45. So determinate is going to give you tomatoes faster. Yeah. And, and leaving nature to do its things, the M, they call them M&M tomatoes uh, just little tiny like a peanut m&m uh, mm -hmm. it volunteered here last year they've just started coming up down in the uh, strawberries oh, so nice. i mean they're only this big so you know nature doing its thing they're just now coming up so you're not too late that's a good point that's a very good point um another one is a determinant now this is a hybrid um it is it's called tomato patio choice and it's available in 45 days that this is like i said is a hybrid that's so, fast that's fast, very fast tomato. Um, now you can also grow some beans. Uh, now these are going to be green beans um, that you'll be able to put in the ground um, and they'll, they'll actually grow quickly. Um, so a top crop bush bean, a contender bush bean, and a green oh. pod bush bean. Shh, Loki. Loki. So a top crop bush bean is available in 48 to 52 days. Loki, sorry, our, our neighbor Travis is coming up to check on his horses. and. Loki's, Loki, it's Loki's, okay. Loki's got to defend us, right? Yes. yes. Our contender bush bean is 48 days, and a green pod bush bean is only 50 days. Um, these are all, I believe, um, open heirloom, uh, or open pollinated, or heirloom. So just so you know, so you still have time for beans. So right now you could do squash, you could do tomatoes, and you can do beans. There so, you go. Yep. Now, what's the fourth thing that we can grow? Well, before we do that, let's change the view. <laughs> well, Loki'd like to know what number four is. Why don't you tell him? Well, number four, Loki, <gasps> is cucumbers. Yes, you can still grow cucumbers. Yep. Let's discuss the varieties. You know, actually, that reminds me, the Ochoas that we got from... An American Homestead. American Homestead. They came up wild on their own this year, and I see the first little one growing out ah, there. I mean, honestly, myself, I wasn't a big fan of how they tasted, but... No, we didn't cook them, though. We didn't cook them, we didn't no. Cook we were them. eating them raw, and if you eat them small, they're good. But 
Yes. Anyway, they're they're taking off on their own and Loki. And they just started putting. Yeah, fruit just now. On, so yeah, and came back mm. on their own. So that's yes. We love volunteer plants. So the o to an the o Ochoa Ochoa. We're not exactly o sure how to Ochoa pronounce it. Yeah. yeah, they um they're supposed to be like a South American cucumber. Yeah. I'll show you a picture of them. They're they're, they're hollow. They look spiny, but they're they're soft <clears> spines. But, yeah, they are. But they seem better when they're younger. But when they get bigger, you can cook them up. A lot of people do it in stir fry. So we're gonna we have did, to try, we didn't try that. Yeah, this year. we'll yes. try that. So, but you still have time for cucumber. So let me go over um, a couple of cucumbers for you. So there is Market More 76. It is an heirloom variety, 58 days. Space Master, 58 days. That is an open pollinated. You also can have time for a pickling cucumber. A lot of people use these cucumbers to turn into pickles. It's Regal. Now this one's a hybrid, but it's only 48 to 52 days. So that is quick. So you, we also threw in a bonus. Um, crop that you could that you could actually put in the ground right now what is that next crop i forgot <laughs> radishes oh yes the radishes the radishes yes. now radishes can actually be um harvested in as little as 30 days there are multiple different varieties they all um grow at about the same speed so i didn't put in specific varieties but radishes, and this man loves radishes. <laughs> I, I do, and you've got to pick them. Last year we left them in the ground way too long. They got like this big, they got woody, that big, and they weren't good, and so I tried cutting them up. That's that's actually one of the things I cooked on the wood stove in there that day. You know, I tried, you know, put it, wrapped them in foil, cut them up. <laughs> They weren't good roasted that way, but that was well. A we pulled them experiment. when they were smaller, though. When well, we that, pulled them when they were smaller, though, you yeah, loved them. You yeah, ate them like crazy. I do. I, my favorite is actually icicle radishes. They look like a white carrot. I love those. I think that's because my grandmother loved those. But um, yeah, the little little round ones are hot. This one doesn't like hot and spicy. So no, no, they're, they're all mine. But <laughs> yes, I'm not a big fan of radishes, but we plant them because this but, one does. Right, but we're gonna roast them because they say they turn sweet when you roast them. So if any of you have tried roasting radishes and they turn sweet, put it in the comments. And or if they let didn't us, turn, turn sweet, put it in the comments. Yes, or let us know, is there a specific variety that Ooh. would be better than another for the sweetness? Yeah. Yeah, because I don't, I don't like spicy. Yeah. yeah, what's your favorite radish? Yes. I so. like it. But, so don't panic. Yep. You can still get things in the ground. We talked about squash. We talked about tomatoes. We talked about beans, cucumbers and radishes that you can do right now and still get a harvest. And like I said, really, really pay attention. Like we talked about, really pay attention to that um, la that first frost date. I keep wanting to say last frost date, first frost <laughs> date, um, yes. to make sure. But like I said, we've got about 93 days here. So we can actually, if we wanted to, we could put all of these in the ground right now and harvest before our first frost date. Yeah. And a, a bonus on top of the bonus. You can extend that 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 harvest. That's true. You know, I I we have not done it. I've seen all kinds of videos about it. People just take you know, uh, like half inch PVC that's very flexible. They just make impromptu hoops, stick them in the ground, and then they just put a big sheet of plastic over, create a, a like a mini greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So you can extend your 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 season a little bit longer that that's way. That's true. Or I know some things you can you can pile up with hay if you know there's a frost coming pile the hay on and then just kind of pull it back in the morning. You know, I mean, that's not going to work if you've got 40 acres of corn or wouldn't be corn, but whatever. Yeah. That wouldn't work, but you can, you can protect them. You know, we go out there, if we're getting a frost and we've got fruit on the tree or blossoms, we throw sheets over it. We look like little... Because they're, they're still small, Yeah, they are. Right? They are still small. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like little, little ghosts and goblins through our, uh, our lower pasture down there. But. Yes. And I wanted to just, don't get discouraged. I know there are a lot of people that are really, they're so, concerned right now. Yeah. Um, they're like, you know, we're worried about the food We're you know, shortages and prices and it's too late. It's not too late. Um, don't get discouraged. Do what you can definitely, uh, get some food stores saved up. Um, don't worry about, there's a lot of people out there telling you how to do this, how to do that. Do what you can just get some food stores. And if you can get some food in the ground, um, there is still time. Uh, so we just, we, we want to be some encouragement for you and, and give you some ideas of how, um, how you can still get a harvest. Yeah. And, and because we haven't done it, we had some potatoes that got set aside in the shop and they got stuff covered up and I pulled them <laughs> out. They had eyes all over them and just, what, not even three or four days ago, 
I'm like, you know what, let's try it. I threw some little bit of dirt in the bottom of a, of a bucket, five gallon bucket, threw some of the straw on top. We're gonna see if they grow. And I bet they do. Yeah. Because our potatoes are going, going, they're going great where they're protected. Where they're not protected, where I'm just kind of like in the hillside, uh. put some potatoes in because we had a lot of seed potatoes. The deer. Deer have oh, been Oh, deer, the deer. Oh, yeah. They are, they are munching down everything. Everything. It's, it's been bad, and they're even leaning over the fence. I mean, you know, where we've got bone sauce, they seem to be pretty protected, but they're, they are grazing through. Because a lot, a lot of these little spaces that I, you know, do the gorilla gardening kind of thing, just, just out of curiosity or if I'm just lacking He just in likes time. things to grow. <laughs> it's almost a goal to stick at least one seed in the ground every day, so... If I'm, so then we get volunteers. We she'll... get volunteers coming up everywhere. Sort of volunteers, <laughs> assigned well, volunteers. No, I'm saying the next year. Oh, like you'll yes. plant something, then all yes. of a sudden the next year or something will <laughs> hey, come back that. that next yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. So she'll be surprised at all the stuff that's going to come up. <laughs> yeah, as long as the deer don't get to it. Well, yeah, and they have. So yeah, I think some deer are going in the freezer. Oh boy, yeah. Our na our neighbors have gotten hit worse than us, but they don't have a fence up like. Or the bone sauce. Or the bone sauce, yeah. So the, the deer have hit them very hard. So I know they're they're looking to forward to some yes. some, some freezer camp for some. Yeah, deer. we've got a lot of deer around. They just they blew up this last spring this spring, but you know. But all right, be, if bugs we, if, are driving you if, nuts. If we subscribe to the World Economic Forum, we could just sit out here and go and suck up these little bugs and Yeah, we're not eating bugs. I'm not eating bugs. Bugs are not a whole protein, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I set you all up for that one. Anyway, all right. Well, you do make sure you, you comment if you uh, have a favorite radish. I am curious because yeah. I, I know the little round red ones and I know the white icicle radishes and maybe there's something I'm completely missing out on. So. Anyway, Loki wants to remind you to get your pet spayed and neutered. Yes, and, and we will be introducing you to oh, yes. new little additions. Yep, we'll do that soon. soon. And Potato harvest soon. Potato harvest soon and the other thing tomorrow or probably Wednesday. This will come out tonight, right? Mm -hmm. when, that's Monday. So Wednesday, we're going to do a little update on the uh, fertilizer that we, mm -hmm. we were testing. Wow. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say is wow. You, you do need to check that one out because I'm looking. It's, it's behind you over there. One, one is a clear winner so far. Yeah, <laughs> so. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, take a guess at which one you think is winning so yeah. far. I'd be curious. Yeah. So. No. All right. Well, be good to yourself. Be good to each other. God bless. We'll see you on the next video. Don't forget the thumbs up. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody.